This is episode number 34 with fashion stylist Jean Mooney. Welcome to the Good Life Coach Podcast. I am your host, Michelle Lamoureux. The intention of this show is to awaken you to your fullest potential. Join me each week for inspiring interviews to elevate an area of your life, as well as interviews with women entrepreneurs who are creating success on their own terms. Each episode provides actionable tips to guide you to design a life you love. Hey there, it's Michelle and welcome back. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about how to style yourself so you look and feel your best every day. In order to help us, I've brought on a fashion stylist. Her name is Jean Mooney, and she has a large, growing, and loyal following on Instagram where women tune in every day to get fashion inspiration and links to the cool outfits that she's posted for that day. Now, you may not enjoy shopping or feel like you have time to spend figuring out what to wear, or maybe you don't know how to accessorize your outfits or make an outfit your own. Or perhaps you're like me, you love fashion and actually enjoy shopping, but you just love learning more tips. Either way, you're covered today with the conversation. We are going to get into how to create a foundation so that what's in your closet works for you. We'll be talking about how to create a capsule wardrobe, what basics we should all have in our closet, Jean's favorite places to shop for these items, and what to invest in and where you can spend less money. We also talk about how to accessorize and what shoe wear you should always have on hand and so much more. Now, Jean works with women from the ages of 18 into their 80s, so she really knows the challenges that women of any age can face when trying to style themselves. And I have to say what I really appreciate about her sense of style is that she incorporates classic cool looks with the current trends and makes it really easy to replicate yourself. So I'm so excited to share this interview with you. And now let's meet the woman that the Boston Globe named a local trendsetter. Welcome, Jean Mooney. Hey, Jean, welcome to the show. Hi, Michelle. It's good to uh, be on your show. And I thank you for having me. So I've been wanting to get a fashionista like you on the show for a while. I think that women struggle with pulling together their wardrobes, especially as you transition from, let's say, corporate world to motherhood or just age-wise, just different life stages. I had a friend say, you know, I'm 40 now. I don't think I should be wearing these short little dresses anymore. And you go through these transitions. So I'm so grateful to have your expertise on the show, but I'd love it if we could kick it off with just a little bit about your background. I know that you're a mother of four and that you were a teacher and you also did college book publishing. So how did you end up transitioning to this world of fashion? Well, I uh, stayed home with my children and did a lot of volunteering. And then I wanted to do something else. So I started working for a local store uh, that was an upscale boutique. And I, um, I was also influenced by my six sisters. I'm one of 11 children growing up in Connecticut. And it's my sisters and my fashionable mother and grandmothers that got me interested in fashion. So when I started working at this shop, I, uh, first of all, met up with a woman who told me she used to see me in a coffee shop every day. And she came in and said, this is where you are. I want to look like you. I want you to be my personal stylist. Oh, my God. So from this, that was my very first. Yeah, that was my very first customer. And uh, she was very extremely stylish and had beautiful clothes from around the world. And I started styling her. And then uh, more and more people who I would meet would ask me to come to their closets and help them pick out things and put things together. And then I ended up meeting um, the CEO of the company I worked for, and uh, he liked my style, and I told him that I felt that he needed someone in the store to help women put outfits together because they would come in and not know what to do. They would basically, there's too many things to decide what should I put with this or whatever. And from there, I helped style a couple of his, of his investors, 
and friends, and I wrote the proposal for the job as stylist. So I started doing it within a store, but also outside. And uh, after that, I was uh, profiled by the Boston Globe as a local trendsetter and was asked to teach at uh, RISD Continuing Ed uh, doing walking tours of Newbury Street, which is the fashionable street in Boston. And from there, I just started doing um, seminars for women and colleges and going to people's houses and taking them shopping. And then it just sort of took off. Wow, that's so cool. Um, was the store anthropology, though, when you said you met the CEO? Was it? Because I know you're on. Yeah. It was. Yes, what? it was, yes. Wow, that's kind of a big deal, Jean. So how long have you been doing this now? I've been doing it, uh, styling, for about 10 years. Okay, and I have to s- s- ask you, because I'm just curious, you have, I think, nearly 16,000 followers on Instagram, and that's actually how I found you. A friend of mine uh, worked with you, and you had commented on one of her posts, and I went to your page, and I immediately started to follow you. I love your sense of style. I'm not surprised somebody reached out to you in a store and said, I've been watching you come help me. Um, so how, when did you start the Instagram page? Uh, I started Instagram about probably three or four years ago. I felt that uh, it would be a, a good social media um, and uh, it would be a good thing to do to uh, enhance my business. And I don't really do a blog because I just don't really have the time with doing uh, my outside business. So basically what I feel is that the picture is the, uh, is the real thing because people know what you can do if, you, if the outfit is put together or whatever. And rather than tell everybody about every part of how you're doing, how you come to what uh, the end result is. Yeah. And so what's like to know it? I know that you're, you have, you'll either reference the stores where your clothes are from in the photographs, which I do agree is very helpful. And then like to know it, I know is this popular uh, resource now. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and how that works? Surely. Uh, it is, uh, it's a, uh, it actually is a, a resource that helps women to find out where you purchased your outfit. It, but it all depends on what stores like to know it uh, covers. For instance, they cover Nordstrom or J. Crew. But what I tend to do if some of my outfits, because I shop from my closet a lot or I buy things at stores that aren't covered, I will tell the uh, client where I purchased them and might be something that was purchased a couple of years ago. But actually, like to know it, uh, will it's a monetizing system for uh, you. If, if a customer ends up buying something from your page, then you get reimbursed. Okay. I was always curious because I, I haven't played around with that too much, but a lot of times I will see something on you and I'll push because if I touch the picture, I know I'll be able to see where you got it. Um, so I think that that is really helpful. Um, but I'm curious, Jean, you know, I know that Stitch Fix became very popular and I think, you know, the woman who started it was onto something. Women, there are those women like us, who, like me maybe, who really enjoy shopping. And then there's others that find it inconvenient and want the convenience. But then there's the actual, what do I put together? So you work with women anywhere from 18 to their 80s. So I'm curious if there's a common challenge that you see that women have when they're trying to style themselves. I find that the biggest uh, challenge is a lack of confidence on the part of the woman, whether it is someone who is 20 or someone who's 80. They just don't necessarily see themselves as other people see them. And I feel like they don't know where to begin. So I feel that with giving someone some styling tips It really helps them to feel comfortable in their own skin and what will work well on them. Uh, For the most part, I feel that a lot of people tend to uh, uh, wear clothes that are too big. Mm. They feel that if they wear something that's a little bit bigger, they'll feel more comfortable in it. But I'll often show them that by wearing something even two sizes down, they look so much better. And I feel that that's something that they have to learn 
and uh, and feel comfortable with to be able to do it on their own and uh, feel confident. I feel that styling is something uh, that is uh, is not something that people come easily by. I feel that a lot of people just don't um, don't understand what works, and I feel it's an art like they're like a uh, someone who excels in math and science, other mm. people in music. It's something that you can learn, but you need to know the tips that will help you to feel confident with yourself. Because I feel style is all about confidence and attitude, how you feel about yourself. I think this is a really important conversation now beyond fashion, because in a way that made me feel sad when you said that. So regardless if they were 18 or in their 80s, the common theme that you're seeing is that women aren't feeling confident with themselves and how they look. I'm just curious, Jean, um, what is the first step somebody can take to pull together their wardrobe? Okay, they can start right in their closet. I think that's a good place because I know that my closet doesn't always look its best, but I feel like each season... Uh, if you would start by uh, purging some of the things from your closet, look, take a look through and find out the things that you really wear uh, and sometimes ha- it needs to be trying things on because something that worked well last year is not going to work well this year and uh, eliminate things and take out the ones that you aren't going to be wearing. So if you have a smaller uh, capsule a uh, group of clothing, then you're more apt to wear them and to know what you have. Uh, it's often good to have them uh, seen uh, because visually, if you can see your accessories and your shoes and your the skirts that you have, the, the dresses, and et cetera, then you are more apt to be able to think about uh, what you can put together and how to wear them. And I also feel that it's, uh, this is what I do myself. Uh, I did from having four children and getting ready in the morning, taking them to all different places. I often uh, put together or thought about what I was wearing the night before. And I think that's key because otherwise you're trying on a million things in the morning and um, you're not sure what to wear and all. And I think that uh, helps considerably. Well, so actually this is helpful. So you mentioned a capsule wardrobe. Um can you just define for us what that means? I've heard that term before. I'm familiar with it, but could you just take a second to define what a capsule wardrobe is? Surely. Well, I feel that a person, uh, when I go to someone's closet and uh, evaluate what they need and all, I always tell them that you definitely need basics first. And it's basically a uniform. And if you don't have these basics, it's going to be difficult for you to wear other items. And some of those basics are things like T-shirts, they might be tank tops, uh, but certain things that you have to have, like someone will, will, for instance, come into uh, a store and uh, I'll ask them, they'll show something to me that they love. It might be a gorgeous top. And then they'll ask me what they should wear it with. And I'll say, well, I would wear that with It's a flowy top. You should probably wear a straighter leg black pants or white denim uh, with it or whatever. And if they don't have those pieces, they're not going to be able to wear that top with it. So those are key items that you should have in your uh, wardrobe. And it varies somewhat depending on one's lifestyle. But for the most part, I think people need like a little black dress or a good go-to dress so that they can dress it up or down. They uh, need to have jeans, a couple of pairs of jeans that they could wear in a casual way, Uh, black pants uh, so that they can wear those if they have to dress them up or down, Uh, a a good blazer would be something that they can wear with jeans and a t-shirt if they wanted to, to look casual but dressed up, certain heels and flats, sneakers, but there's the few items that you have to have at the beginning of the season to be able to wear all your other things. Yeah, no, this is good. So with the t-shirts and the tank tops, uh, are you talking basic colors like white and black and a gray, for example, versus colors? Yes, uh, the basic colors, I would say, to get first. And then you, once you have those, then you can add other things to your wardrobe. 
And if, if you have the basics, you can add accessories to that, whether it be a scarf or a necklace or a pair of earrings. But you really need to have those or it makes it difficult uh, to, uh, to wear your other items. Do you have a favorite or favorite stores to get those basics from? Maybe are those maybe places where you don't have to invest too much? Or where, where do you say, you know, go get your basic tees and tanks here, but for shoes, maybe you go more expensive. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yes. I feel like uh, a store like Madewell is a good place as good quality t-shirts and you, uh, they're not that expensive, but, or you could go to, uh, if you want to spend less money, you could go to Zara or H and M, which, you know, if you want to get something that's more trendy, I would say doing something like that. But my favorite stores are Bloomingdale's, Zara, H&M for trendier items, Madewell, <clears throat> a Club Monaco, um, Coast. Uh, but just a, a, mixed, a mixture of stores is the best bet rather than to do everything at one store. Anthropology, of course, too. Yeah, of course. I know. I think women love, and I love all the stores you mentioned. I think women love, love anthropology. Um, So what about then, you know, you talked about um, accessorizing. So where does that come into the picture? So once you have your capsule wardrobe, so your capsule, if I'm understanding correctly, is those, your go-tos so that you can layer or dress up or dress down. You've got the black dress, you've got the jeans, the black pants, the blazer, the heels, the flats, the sneakers. And then where do the accessories come into the picture? Uh, the accessories make the outfit your own because what you do with a dress, uh, like a, uh, if you had a simple black dress on, you can look like everybody else. But if you add your own spin to it, whether it be a statement pair of earrings or a great necklace, not together, not, uh, I wouldn't do two statements, but one statement or another. Uh, it makes that item your own. So uh, you could take a, the little black dress and do some statement earrings and then maybe do uh, just keep it all black for like uh, heels. You could do something like that. Or you might want to do a different color a pop, like a bright color shoe to enhance the earrings but not to have it too matched up. So I feel like accessories are everything and they make all the difference between, you know, looking like yourself or looking like everybody else. Yeah. And again, I'm thinking about budget. So some people might be able to invest a lot and others may not be able to. So what advice do you give on that? Is it more about how you feel in it, how it looks to you? I mean, what, what's your philosophy around the budget when it comes to accessorizing or even finding, you know, those great pair of heels or that blazer? What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Right. I feel it's important with like classic pieces to uh, make an investment because you'll have them. A good blazer goes a long way. I still have a beautiful uh, aqua linen blazer that I had for 25 years with white wow. pull buttons and it it looks as well today as it did then. Mm. And uh, a good navy blazer, good pair of shoes will last. But then it's fun. To, you, could, you could get an inexpensive necklace or an inexpensive pair of earrings. It just depends on, you know, what you want to spend. If it's a trend, I'd say definitely spend less money because it's not, it might not be here uh, next year. Bobble Bar is a good place to get earrings and necklaces. What is, Jean? Which one? Uh, Bobble Bar. B-A-U-B-L-E. Bobble Bar. Okay. Uh, Yeah. It's a good place for earrings, and they're not too expensive. But I've uh, I've also spent a lot of money on accessories, and I still have them today. Out of college, I got one of my first investments was a beautiful scarf from Saks. And at the time, it was a lot of money, and I still have it today. So I feel like those kind of things you're definitely willing to invest money in because you will have them forever. But again, the um, the fleeting uh, items that will be here this year or next year then spend less money. And there's plenty of stores like Zara and H&M where you can find those things and they will definitely enhance your outfit. And I, I feel like the coolest way to dress and style is by uh, doing a combination of high-end, low-end, a consignment shop, 
and uh, I feel like doing your own, putting your own um, signature on it is the best. Um, this is so good, and I'm, I'm just thinking about um, this idea of feeling confident. So, can you give us a story? I mean, without obviously sharing the person's name or anything, but just could you take us into a story of how, by helping a woman who wasn't feeling particularly confident, you know, by making a wardrobe shift, how it helped her confidence? Because I imagine that's partially why people are hiring you, because they know they end up feeling better about themselves once they know how to dress the right, for their body and to have fun with it again, to have fun with the fashion. Thank you. I, I met someone who had lost uh, a considerable amount of weight but just wasn't feeling well about herself. So I talked her into trying on some um, pieces that were a lot smaller than what she was wearing. And she said, oh, no, I, I never wear a size small. She was always used to wearing a larger size. And so we, we started with a large, and we ended up moving down into like a size small. And each time to see her face, I'm wearing this outfit that looks great, on, that I feel really well in. And um, just to have someone, you know, just be so pleased with the way they look and feel is just everything. And that's really what I like about doing this because uh, I love making people feel well about themselves. I have a funny story when I was teaching, uh, actually when I was student teaching, I, the master teacher, it was a fifth grade class. The teacher, who happened to be male, said uh, to me, the girls like your style. Mm. And they are going off to middle school, and they wish that you would tell them what kind of things they should wear. So I came in the next day with my headbands, which are popular now, and, <laughs> and belts and scarves, and told them, you know, what what they should wear, basically. These are the things that I like, and this, this makes you look, um, you know, uh, like an individualist. If you do it, you do your own thing with it. It's all up in your head and so on and so forth. And so now it's so funny because now instead of teaching, I'm teaching people how to feel well about themselves and how to style themselves. And uh, it, uh, it's very rewarding. I feel like that's the best part of it. Yeah, and it's so nice for the per the recipient of that because they get a part of themselves back. Because I think, you know, as women yeah. age, what we saw in the mirror changes, right? Just aging yeah. is a natural part of life. And our bodies change. If you have children, you nurse, all of this stuff, uh, you know, multiple kids, you know, it does things to your body. And we want to feel sensual. We want to feel beautiful. So I'm curious, you know, what advice do you give women who are aging in their 40s, 50s, 60s? How do they reclaim that gene? Well, I've heard a lot of women, you know, whether it be 40s, 50s, 60s, say, well, I can't wear that anymore. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm too old. And I feel it's all in your head, and I feel that it has to be your comfort level and how you feel wearing something. For example, for myself, I have three daughters. I don't want to look, I'm not trying to look their age, but I also want to look cool. And I feel I wear what I feel confident in, and whether it be I feel like if a woman who is older wants to wear a bikini or if they want to wear a uh, shorter skirt, if it works for you, and I think it's fine. I feel like it's it's really all about uh, one's comfort level and confidence, and I feel that that confidence and attitude is everything. I've told uh, people many times that uh, when I uh, style them, I say that I love the way this looks. It looks great. You, you know, it's fantastic, whatever. But if you don't feel well about yourself, then it doesn't matter. It would be like going to a party and you, even though you, t someone told you that this looks great on you and you don't feel confident, you're not going to have a good time. You're not going to feel well about yourself. But if you have the confidence level, you're going to go and feel fantastic. And I think that's what it's all about. It's whatever makes you happy. And um, I feel that uh, you should do something that you feel age appropriate in and that works for you and your body type. And that'll make you feel good about yourself. I think that makes sense. I think sometimes you can buy things because it's on sale or like you said, it right. might be a trend. So you feel like, oh, maybe I'll just try this. But you have to like 
what you're seeing in that reflection uh, and how it fits on you and that it makes you feel more of you. It, that's what I'm hearing, actually. Clothing is just another yeah. way and accessories of expressing yourself, which is why exactly. it can be so fun, which is probably why you love doing what you do. And I have to say, you do look cool. I'll be linking to your Instagram um, in the show notes. And I, I'd encourage everyone to go check out Jean's page because you look gorgeous. And I ended up meeting you when I went to Boston. Um, and you, you, there's something about the way you carry yourself, Jean. What you're wearing looks amazing, but there is a level of confidence and elegance that you exude. I mean, it's amazing. So you are definitely walking your talk, and I'm not surprised that women are drawn to wanting to work with you. When and how do you add to the wardrobe? Right. I add a combination. Usually we start with uh, a, a pad of paper, too, to write a list of the items that they need to update their wardrobe to make it uh, current. Because just, uh, for instance, uh, trends will make a difference in your wardrobe, making it look polished and uh, up to the minute. And you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money on those, but they'll make your outfit look so much better. It could be color, like right now, certain colors. There's pastels now, if they work for you. There's bold colors. There's neons. But any of those items will bring your outfit up to date. And so you want to have a list of some of those, or it might just be that uh, the individual doesn't have the basics. I remember one of the first uh, houses I went to, uh, a client's home, uh, she didn't have many items to, for me to explain to her. And I think a lot of styling is, is visual for the, uh, for the individual. They have to be able to see what I'm telling them. So after I had gone to that particular woman's home, I have always brought along with me uh, a bag of props. So I'll bring some scarves of mine, some belts, some t-shirts maybe and certain items that accessorize and change things around that just to show them what a difference it will make with what they have. Yeah, that's really good. That's, that's so helpful. And um, so then, then they go pick up those pieces. Talk to us about yeah. color though. Cause you talked about pastels being in, I think sometimes you want to wear trends, but maybe they don't look right on you or the colors don't look good. I've always been, aware with myself and I always notice with other friends there's certain colors that light someone's face up and then there's other colors that don't work. So how, how do you approach color? Depending on your skin tone, you are uh, not able to wear certain colors. So yellow being one of them. Uh, yellow is a hard one for a lot of people to wear, especially like a um, bluish yellow. Uh, it doesn't work always. So what I tell people is they can, uh, if they're wearing a color that's closer to their face, they can always add something like a scarf around their neck that are that has colors that work for their complexion. And I feel like by adding something like that, you're able to wear things. And a lot of times people say, well, I can't wear, for instance, mustard. But if they wear it on the bottom half of their body as a skirt or a pair of pants, with a top, whether it be black or navy or white, they can often wear that co still wear that color. So it's knowing what colors work well with your uh, complexion that uh, is important. And I like and, what you said uh, about wearing it on the bottom. I didn't mention trap. I like that idea though. So if you can't wear the mustard yeah. on top, you can wear it on bottom on the bottom. Like I don't, I don't yeah. like the way yeah. the mustard looks on me, but I love that color. I think it's gorgeous. Right. Um, but yeah, that's creative. That's actually a great idea. Um, can we touch on shoes just because I think, you know, in terms of the, the capsule wardrobe, the basic. So what are the, what are the shoes that you should absolutely have per season okay. in your closet? Let's, let's go through shoes. Right. I think shoes are make or break an outfit as well. Don't you agree? Right. That's what I was just going to say. They definitely make or break an outfit. If, if it isn't the right proportion or uh, style, then it can uh, definitely uh, ruin the outfit. So they're very important to have. I feel like with a lot of people, I feel like a pretty toe makes someone's uh, leg look longer, mm. with whether it be a flat slide, 
but some people can't wear uh, like a pointed shoe. People have like trouble with their feet or whatever. A ballet flat would do the same trick for for a lot of uh, items for a flat. Uh, then I feel like a strappy sandal is a good thing, even in the, like for the summer or even in the winter. Um, I tend to wear even suede in the summer, and it's fun to mix. Um, uh, textures that you wouldn't necessarily have done in the past. Today, uh, the uh, style is more relaxed that way, and you can wear suede in the summer or the winter, or, uh, for instance, leather, too, uh, like a leather jacket in the summer if you if it, you have colder weather. But I feel like a um, strappy heel is a good thing to have. A, uh, a pump, a pointy pump is a good item, and if you can't wear something that's a higher heel, you can always wear a block heel, which is very popular now. And uh, I think that's something that you can have in your wardrobe. Uh, a good pair of loafer style, whether it be a backless mule or a, uh, a for instance, I have white loafers, and I think they look well now that uh, the relaxed uh, white look is in so that you can wear white during the winter. Uh, I feel like that is something that looks great with whether you have a pair of jeans on or a skirt. A uh, good pair of sneakers is uh, something that's important. Uh, so I feel like in uh, sandals for the summer and booties as well, mm. because you can wear booties all seasons. I feel those are important to have in your wardrobe. And uh, if it's the winter, a good pair of uh you could do a uh, over the knee boot or a higher boot, uh, depending on uh, one's uh, style and choice. Are there any style resources that you like to go? So, you know, how do you stay on top of the trends and get style inspiration? Where do you like to, to send people to get inspired? Right. I find myself, I like uh, fashion magazines. I think that they're my favorite ones are like Bizarre W. And just what I do is I look through the magazines and and uh, pick what I like, and uh, then I uh, edit it to what works best for me. I look, I follow on Instagram. I like to see what other people are wearing on uh, Instagram, and that's what I usually tell people. Or or if they see if people don't really know what they want, I'll tell them to um, go to magazines and cut out pictures of items that they like, the looks that they like, and that makes it easier to help them style. But they can also uh, do, um, you know, a Pinterest and a lot of other things. So there's something for everybody, whatever they, uh, you know, whatever they choose uh, to look. But I feel like a magazine tells a picture. I like to see the magazines. Uh, that's my favorite thing to look at. Yeah, I love I love magazines as well. I do love flipping through and and it's the visual and the touching it. Maybe, I don't know, there's something about the photograph right. that's right in front of you. I do like that. Um, Jean, I know that you believe that age is a state of mind. Can you say more about what that's that right. means? Yeah, what does that mean? Surely, I feel like um, it all depends. Like my mother was a good role model. She was uh, a nurse by profession, but always very stylish and put together. And I feel like uh, it's really how you feel. It's your outlook on life. And I feel if you, she always dressed uh, age appropriately, but always looked cool. People loved her style. I would wear any of her clothes because I feel like they were classic, yet she did her own thing with them. And I feel if you, you know, feel well about yourself and confident, it goes back to confidence again and attitude that you, um, you know, you'll feel well in all aspects of your life. Yeah. And really what I'm taking away from you and from this conversation, which I'm really enjoying so much, is that you have some creative control and that by taking the time to think about what you're putting on, how it makes you feel, it's going to actually impact your level of confidence. It's going to boost it. So before we wrap up, Jean, can you leave the women listening with your three best tips on how to best style themselves? First and foremost, wear things that fit. I feel that that's the most important thing because if you uh, wear uh, something that isn't appropriate in size, it will make you not 
feel well about yourself. I think that's one thing. And also, it's important to know proportions in um, picking out outfits. I, I know that in a lot of magazines now and in, um, in store windows, you see oversized tops with oversized bottoms. And that always doesn't work. It might look great in a magazine and it might look great in a window, but it doesn't always work for you. I feel that if you have a uh, wide pair of pants or a full skirt, that you should have a a tighter fitting top still. And whether it's um, it's, now the style is to be a little bit slouchier. So if you were to tuck it in a little bit, tuck it in the front or uh, a partial tuck or uh, tuck it all around, just to have it be a tighter fit with uh, a bigger bottom. And it goes the same way with a, um, if you have, skinny pants or straight pants, you should have a looser top because you don't want to have it to be all straight up and down. Mm. And I think those things never change. And also to pick, and my third uh, thing would be to pick out classic pieces that have staying power for your, uh, you know, capsule pieces, because you'll have those always. And definitely, as I mentioned previously, spend less on trends and um, you'll, you'll end up with a polished look, but not uh, be sorry later that when next year, those items are not uh, still around. Yeah, I know this is so great. Um, Jean, where can people learn more about you and your work? Where can I direct them? Okay, probably to my uh, Instagram. Uh, it's styled, E-D, by Jean, J-E-A-N-N-E. And uh, I think that would be the best. Yeah, and I think, you know, for those of you who are listening, I uh, the when this comes out, I think I'm going to have you do a um, takeover of my account so people can see some outfits on my side, too. I think that would be a lot of fun, Jean. Um, That's nice. Um, this has been so great. It actually got me feeling a little inspired to go peek into my closet and see about how I can be more creative because I feel like I, I really love fashion, but I haven't spent enough time on this. And I hope that the women listening walked away with some great tips. I'm sure that they did. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was my pleasure. And thank you. And I think you look great. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed the interview with Jean today and that it inspires you to look at what you have in your closet and how you've been styling yourself so that you can update your wardrobe to look and feel your most confident self. Now, if you enjoyed today's interview, please take a minute to share it. And if you'd like to access the show notes, then head on over to thegoodlifecoach.com forward slash 034 and I'll have the link to Jean's Instagram account. And I recommend that you go check her out and say hello over there. She has such a great sense of style and I think you'll enjoy her Instagram page. Thanks again for tuning in this week and I look forward to reconnecting next Wednesday. Bye for now.